Hi guys, a lot of you have been asking me about how to study pharmacology. I understand that pharmacology is a little on the drier side and it's a difficult subject to remember and learn. But if you do it the right way, it's probably one of the most easiest subjects to understand and to apply. Well, in this video, I'll be discussing all the do's, the don'ts and how to study each chapter with a strategy. Well, watch the video till the end to understand all the important points and also certain memorization tactics that you should know. So go ahead and watch the video till the end. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Noor Saira, an endodontist and a part-time YouTuber. I make videos on exam strategies, productivity habits, productivity lifestyle and also exam guidances for competitive examinations like those of NEET MDS. So let us dive in right into today's topic that is how to study pharmacology. Well, the first I want to mention here is the don't. One big mistake that every student does while studying pharmacology is studying pharmacology as an independent subject. Well, what is pharmacology? Pharmacology is basically the science where you understand what the drug does to the body or what the body does to the drug. So this entire pharmacology revolves around these two things. So for you to understand these two things, you need to understand the physiology and the pathology of the body first. So you need to know how a body functions under a normal condition, that is the physiology of the body, and how the body functions under an abnormal condition, that is the pathology of the body. So if you don't understand the physiology and the pathology of the body, you're not going to understand the pharmacology because everything is interrelated. So you end up mugging the classification, the mechanism of action, the side effects, and ultimately after two days, uh, you don't remember anything and then you consider pharmacology as very difficult and a frustrating subject. So it's always important to make your life easy. It's always important to understand things rather than mugging the things. So let us go ahead and see how we can make your life easy and how we can make it easy for you to learn pharmacology. So let's move on to the do's of pharmacology. That is, what are the things that you should do to learn pharmacology easily? So for the first thing you need to do is you have to accept the fact that pharmacology cannot be studied as an independent subject. So you have to understand the background physiology and pathology of that system which you're going to study the pharmacology about. For example, if you're going to study about blood and the drugs acting on the blood, you need to understand the coagulation pathway, the coagulation cascade, the you know, function of the platelets, the pathway of the platelets when there is an injury or when there is bleeding. For you to understand the mechanism of action of those drugs which act on the blood. So because the drugs will either inhibit something or activate something. So if you understand the physiology and the pathology, you will easily understand the pharmacology also. The second thing you should do is keep your general pharmacology very, very strong. Now, I also understand that the first few chapters of general pharmacology, that is the pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, is a little difficult to understand. But the moment you understand it the right way, the entire pharmacology will become very, very easy. It is just like anatomy. When you understand the first few chapters of anatomy, that is, you know, the, the sections, the frontal, the sagittal, the coronal sections, then you understand the meaning of the other chapters because everything is interrelated. Similarly, in pharmacology, the pharmacokinetics and the pharmacodynamics are interrelated in every chapter. So it's very important for you to understand those concepts. So like, for example, the zero order kinetics or the first order kinetics or the first pass metabolism. All this thing, the therapeutic index, it's very, very important that you understand these concepts way in the beginning so that you're able to make your life easy for the next few chapters. The third important thing you should understand is that there are a few chapters in pharmacology which are basically the core. That is, for example, the autonomic nervous system. Now, the drugs which are there in the autonomic nervous system, that is, the sympatholytic drugs or the sympathomimetic drugs, they have action on multiple systems that is they have action on the ANS they have action on the CVS they have action on the respiratory system the moment you understand the mechanism of these drugs and on the receptors a few of the chapters are already covered down the lane you will understand this the moment you 
read these big chapters properly that especially the autonomic nervous system so it has action on multiple other systems so the moment you read these chapters very very well half of the portions are already covered so be smart so understand where you need to put your attention understand where you need to put your focus so the first few chapters of pharmacology especially the general pharmacology in the autonomic nervous system this has to be very very strong the fourth important point is know a little bit about microbiology that is gram negative bacteria gram positive bacteria the cell wall the cell membrane what is it made up of again the moment you understand this uh the cell membrane and the cell wall you, the chapter on antibiotics becomes very very easy so the whole uh chapter on the penicillin the uh, macrolids and everything else is interrelated with this tetracycline everything so the moment you understand how the cell wall functions and what are the ribosomes what is the dna present what is the cell membrane which is present the rest is just application of the information so you have to be smart and clever to understand this The fifth point is that you make smart and effective notes. So you can make notes or you can write down pharmacology only and only when you have understood it thoroughly. So it's very very important that you write notes in your own understanding rather than picking up somebody else's note because they would have written it in their own understanding. So it's important that you make your own notes also. make smart uh, note making techniques or use smart uh, note making techniques for example like that of flow charts mind mapping and multiple other things i have made an entire video on smart notes making i'll link it here you can go ahead and watch that the next thing you should use when studying pharmacology are flash cards now flash cards are nothing but double sided paper where on one side you write the question and the other side you just write the answer and it's a very very effective revision technique i have uh, spoken in detail about uh, flash cards and how you should make flash cards what are the do's what are the don'ts and what is the revision strategy you should have with a flash card completely in a video i'll link that video also here go ahead and watch that So the next thing you should do is make a lot of mnemonics for the different classification of drugs the different side important side effects of the drugs make a lot of mnemonics of these classifications and side effects on small sticky notes and you stick the sticky notes on a plain wall in your study room and make a wall of revision so every day when you are just passing through that wall or you're going getting up to go to the bathroom or getting up to get some snack you just glance on the wall on one or two sticky notes and you recollect this mnemonics every day and since you are recollecting these mnemonics or trying to remember or reinforcing these mnemonics every single day it's going to get registered in your mind and it will help in actively recalling information I have spoken in detail about the wall of revision a uh, revision technique in one of my videos I will link that video here you can go ahead and watch that So based on the same lines of revision we also have a technique called as a Feynman technique Now what is a Feynman technique it's basically a revision tactic or a revision technique wherein you use teaching as a tool for example if you finding a concept very very difficult to understand you read the concept once or read the concept twice you close the book and you verbally talk uh, as if you're trying to teach somebody okay normally you talk as if you're trying to explain it to a 5 year old in a very you know basic language but for pharmacology i would recommend that you don't use the tactic of as if you're teaching a child but you you know talk as if you're teaching a colleague because it's important to use the technical terminologies in pharmacology otherwise it will not get registered in your mind So you try to teach the other person you try to behave as if you're teaching a classroom and see how much information you're able to recall and the information that you're not able to recall you go ahead and recollect from opening the book and similar approach you can do it while writing down also so you write down what you have understood and things that have missed out you can always reinforce it back from the book So this is the different strategies you should use when learning pharmacology. Let's move on to the third section where we discuss about chapter wise approach of how to study each chapter in pharmacology. Well the three books that I refer to pharmacology is KD Tripathi, Padma Jha and Sparsh Gupta. While I understand it is too much and it is too vast to read so much, so you can always stick to one book, one basic book like KD Tripathi or uh, even Padma Jha is enough. I'm talking about dental students. 
So what is the approach you should have? When you, uh, the first approach that you should have is when you are trying to read about a system, very, very important that you read the physiology and the pathology of that system. Understand, for example, if you're trying to read about respiratory system, you need to know how the normal, how respiratory system normally functions and what happens in bronchial asthma and what is bronchial asthma. And um, uh, the airway is inflamed and there is a constriction. Why there is a constriction and why there is inflammation, you need to understand. For you to be able to understand what kind of medication is necessary to treat bronchial asthma? One is anti-inflammatories, then you have bronchodilators, then you have mast cell stabilizers. So if you know the process of bronchial asthma, what happens in bronchial asthma, you will be e easily able to understand what are the drugs which are required in the treatment of bronchial asthma. Having said that, keeping that approach, the first approach, a chapter-wise approach that you need to have is that you learn the classification, you learn the mechanism of action, and you learn the mechanism of action and the side effects of the main drug in that group. Okay, you don't have to go ahead and learn in detail about each drug which is mentioned. For example, in the textbook, it's normally given a para is given about each drug. So it's impossible for you to remember such in depth about each drug. So it's important that you understand the classification, you understand the mechanism of action and you understand the importance of that single important drug. For example, we're talking about NSAIDs, the main drug that we talk about is aspirin. Talking about opioids, the main drug we talk about is morphine and the other drugs either prototypes or some variations or semi-synthetic variations. So you need to know which is the semi-synthetic one, which is the natural one, but you don't need to know in depth about each. So the basic criteria here is that you understand the concept rather than just trying to mug up each drug and learn the important side effects. Apart from side effects, the other important things that you should really, really, really learn is the drug interactions. Now, drug interactions, one of the favorite questions which was asked as MCQs in your you know, competitive examinations. So it's important that you learn the classification, mechanism of action, the concept, the main drug, the side effect and the drug interactions. Once you have read all this, you go ahead and make effective notes because these effective notes is all that you will be able to revise towards the end before your examination. So make effective notes. Uh, notes are to be made uh, by three levels of reading if you are somebody who likes to refer two or three books. Now what is the concept here is that you read one book, you make notes, you read another book, you make notes, and then you have an aggregated, uh, you know, concise, customized notes of your own. I have spoken in depth about this also, that is the three effective levels of reading. I will link the video here, you can go ahead and watch that as well. Well, having said all this, that this being the right method of studying, that understanding the physiology, pathology, and then going ahead and understanding the concept of pharmacology, well, Still, pharmacology is difficult to certain students and they find it really, really time consuming to go ahead and do so much, especially when you're giving a competitive examination. Having kept that in mind is why I actually, uh, you know, made customized pharmacology videos or lectures. So we have a small course of pharmacology wherein we have an aggregated 20-25 uh, lectures which are in-depth information uh, which is uh, with information aggregated from various important sources like Kere Tripathi, Padmaja, Sparj Gupta and multiple question bank everything concised into one place where I explain the physiology and the pathology in the beginning and then give you concept wise understanding of the drug and also a lot of mnemonics to remember from and all this uh, concised into 25 lectures and the uh, and the uh, logic here is that you just watch one lecture video a week and by the end uh, you know without any burden you are covered with pharmacology in the best way possible with all the potential questions that could be asked in neat mds so i hope that uh, you go ahead and pick up these lectures for more details about the lecture uh, go ahead and dm me or leave a comment on my channel I hope that this video has been helpful to you. Please do leave a comment and help me grow and also uh, make motivate me to do more videos. I hope you do your best in the examination. All the best and thank you for watching the video. For more such videos, please like, share, follow and subscribe my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Instagram. Have a good day. Thank you.